Okay, welcome to chapter 11, Rational Equations and Functions. Section 11.1 1 is over ratios and proportions. Uh, the most important um, property that we're going to use in this section is called the pro cross product property. I'm assuming a lot of you have used it before. We use it to solve all of our equations today. Um, it states that if A is to B as C is to D, then A times D equals B times C. So uh, if we've got a proportion, a proportion being a ratio equal to another ratio, uh, then the cross products of that proportion should also be equal. That is A times D equals B times C. That's why they're called cross products. There's also another uh, property called the reciprocal pro property on page 643 in your book. It's just to read that too. It talks about uh, some of the orders not mattering uh, with where things are placed. So let's solve this uh, proportion. Let's use the cross product property. Um, if 2 thirds is equal to 3 over w, then 2 times w should be equal to 3 times 3. Okay, those are the cross products. 2 times w, 3 times 3. We can simplify both sides, 2w equals 9, and divide both sides by 2. So w equals 9 halves. Pretty straightforward. I think a lot of you have done that before. However, uh, we'll throw some quadratics into it. Uh, maybe you can see how this one's a little bit different, but the same property, the cross product property, should still apply. So 10 times 5 should equal t times 2t. So 50 should equal 2t squared. So uh, no big deal. This time we end up with a quadratic equation. Um, there's no b term, so um, we can solve this by taking the square root of both sides after we divide both sides by 2. And then you just got to remember that uh, quadratic equations can have two solutions, and this one does. Um, t could be positive or negative 5. Okay, here's another one, and this one's even a little bit more different. Hopefully you're looking at this quantity, d minus 3, and wondering how that affects it. Well, let's do cross products. Negative 3 times 2d should equal d times d minus 3. Notice the d minus 3 in parentheses, and that's how we need to treat those quantities all the time. Simplify both sides. Distri distribu distributive property on the right. And then I'm going to put this into standard form. Um, you know, we've got a b term, so we can't solve it by doing square roots like we did in example 2. Um, but we do have a couple choices. We could graph this and look for where its x-intercepts are. Um, we could use the quadratic formula um, with a being 1, b being 3, and c being 0. Um, but whenever I've got something like this, factoring is definitely the easiest route. So take d, which is the common factor of both these terms, out. And then we can use the zero product property to say that d is 0 or negative 3. Uh, however, we do have an issue here. And that is that if we plug these solutions back in, that if we plug 0 back in for d right here, we'll have 0 on the bottom of a fraction. And you can't divide by 0. That's uh, an undefined procedure. Uh, just like if we plug 0 in over here, we'd have 2 times 0 is 0. So 0 is what we would refer to as an extraneous solution. Uh, it might be a solution to this equation, but it is not a solution to the original proportion, and that's what we're trying to solve. So negative 3 is actually the only uh, solution to this particular one. All right, so let's uh, do some u try -its. Give this one a go. Press pause, and when you press play again, my solution will be waiting for you with all my work. Go ahead. All right, so we've got a proportion. We're going to do cross products. 4 times 5 should equal 16 times r. Simplify both sides and divide both sides by 16. 20 divided by 16 is 5 fourths. Pretty straightforward.
give this one a shot. Remember to press pause, and when you press play, my solution will be here waiting. All right, so cross products, x plus 3 times 5 should equal 4 times x. We distribute on the left, 5x plus 15. Let's subtract 5x from both sides. That'll give us 15 equals negative x, and then our solution would be negative 15. Okay, one more for you to try on your own. Got some uh, quantities here that you'll have to deal with. Press pause, and when you press play, my solution and work will be waiting for you. All right, so the quantity x plus 3 times negative 5 should equal the quantity of x plus 5 times the quantity of x minus 3. We'll distribute on the left side, negative 5x minus 15. Now on the right, um, we've got to multiply these two binomials. x times x is x squared. We've got x times negative 3 is negative 3x, and 5 times x is 5x. I'm going to just go ahead and do that in my head. That's 2x and then 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. So we've got a quadratic equation. Uh, there is a b term, so let's put this in standard form, and then we can decide how we're going to go about solving this. Let's add 5x to both sides and add 15 to both sides. Okay. Now in this case, uh, we've got no c term, and when I'm not going to use quadratic formula here. The easiest way is probably to factor out that x and then you use the zero product property. So x would be 0 uh, and negative 7. Now last time we did one like this, 0 was an extraneous solution, but it's not this time. 0 plus 5 is 5, and you're allowed to divide by 5. That's not an issue. Uh, negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2, and you're allowed to divide by negative 2. So that's not an extraneous solution. If negative 5 uh, came about as one of our solutions, that would be extraneous, and we would ignore it. But it didn't. Okay, so let's use proportions to solve real-world uh, problems here. The route of your town's 4th of July parade stretches 2 miles, which is about 10,560 feet. Uh, spectators are usually evenly distributed along both sides of the route. On one side of a 50-foot section of the route, you count 15 children. Estimate the number of children who attended the parade. Uh, there's a couple different ways we could set this up. Here's the way I'm thinking about it. I'm saying that there are x children along the 10,560 foot route. And then I'm also thinking that there are 30 children, because one side has 15, that would mean two sides have 30 along a 50 foot section of the route. I'll use cross products, 50 times x is 50x, and 10,560 times 30 is 316,800. I can divide both sides uh, by 50, and I get 6,336 people. And actually, we'll call that uh, not people, but children. Children are people, but we're sp talking specifically about children. Here's another one staying with the parade uh, theme. You want to make a scale model of a parade float. The float is 5 foot. 5.5 feet high and 10 feet long. Uh, your model will be 14 inches long. How tall should it be? Uh, keeping it to scale. Okay, let's go with the ratio they give me. 5.5 feet high for every 10 feet long. Uh, that would equal x feet high for 14 inches long. Cross products, 5.5 times 14 is 77, just like 10 times x is 10x. So the height of my model should be 7.7, .7, and remember your dimensions. Um, the model, we're talking about inches, so 7.7 .7 inches high. All right, one more. Maybe you want to get some lemonade along that, uh, or set up a lemonade stand along that parade route. A lemonade recipe calls for three-quarter cup of lemon juice for two quarts of lemonade. Well, that's a ratio. Three-quarter cups of lemon juice for every two quarts of lemonade. How much lemon juice should you use for an eight-quart jug of lemonade? Um, we're asking how much lemon juice, so our unknown is on top. 
just like our three quarters is on top. Do our cross products. A little simplifying there on the right. Solve that equation. Our answer is three cups, meaning three cups of lemon juice for an eight quart jug of lemonade. Okay, so that sums up uh, section 11.1 for you. I highly recommend that you read section 11.1 along with copying these notes. That starts on page 643 of your book. When you come into class tomorrow, uh, we'll do some of this together. Good luck.